Japan's Black Series Edition LLC Crystal Edge Technology Screens, and our new company coming soon, which is the FLEBT Company. Um, we are showing off our new screen paint. This is called our FLE. I think it's the RM rating, which is a medium rating. And this right here is our 77. That's the category of the product. And this is the Prism um, Cinema. Prism Cinema. So basically, these are different color screen paints we're working on because I was over on Facebook and I was showing up the screen paints and just what screen paint. This is the first one we have right now that's available. And we call this Scorch Rose Pink or Pink Rose, which I remember which one I have in there. But anyway, it's a dark pink, and it's actually an absolute beautiful, beautiful color. Picks up amazing white levels. It is fully tested because we did all the tests for it to make sure the product's working perfectly fine. White levels, contrast levels, uh, color levels, all that other good stuff. Make sure it runs on ultra short throw. Uh, make sure it picks up on a 1000 lumen 720p projector, which we use in the demonstration. We're using a Sony VPL CS4 projector at 720p, 600 by 800 revs, about 9 to 10 feet back from the screen. And only at a thousand lumens. So let's remove this so you can see how beautiful that image is going to look. And again, no expensive projectors. Now, what's the advantage point of a color screen? Well, some people, not saying all people, but some people uh, want something different on their wall. They want something that's going to match the interior of their environment or come close to matching the interior of their environment. We're not going to do a lot of customization for these screens. Uh, they want something that is going to uh, make their screen stand out. That's what they want. Uh, you got a man cave at the end of the day. You want a screen to match your favorite football team. Um, you have um, a sports bar or wherever we want to put these screens in. You want to have this in your home, uh, your bar. What are going to have it at the end of the day? You're going to make something that's going to be different than your everyday projection screen, something that can match the interior of the environment. And again, the screen looks absolutely gorgeous with the projector off. It looks fantastic, even more fantastic with the projector on. And yes, because the surface is colored, it still has the ability to pick up its white levels, contrast, and color, as we showed you in the demonstrations. In the link below, I put down the demonstration showing you how to paint the screen in. This very surface is made out of strictly just cardboard. It cost me $2 to put together. You can paint it on literally anything you want. It's a one coat coverage, which means the printed cardboard boxes, which we painted in the demonstration, it just took one pass to actually change them over to our technology. Again, not hard to do. Your kids could literally paint the screen in. And again, most importantly, you're not stuck in a dark environment and no expensive projectors required. So, let's begin. Get some nice scenery in there. Some sound for our scenery. Now the first color we have available, which is going to be the Scorch Pink Rose. After that, we have other colors that are going to follow behind it. We're going to have a blue, we're going to have a green, we'll have a yellow, we'll have a red. This is a great way to do something different with your home theater setup. Now, the projector I'm using this demonstration. You can get these machines, no HDMI port, which is not needed. Like I said, you can get an adapter for that. You're still going to pick up an excellent sharp image, as you've seen in the demonstration right now. If you choose to not use an HDMI port, this means this is going to save you a lot of money. This projector is going to cost you under $60. Keep in mind, when you see people with high-powered, beefy machines, they have to have these machines because they can't get the resolution to pick up sharper. They have poor color capabilities. They have poor contrast capabilities. And I'm talking about people that are using these projectors in their demonstrations. Not customers, but people that are using these projectors in their demonstrations to try to prove that their products work. But all in all, they can't save any money. I don't know how they're going to save you any money. This whole setup for this screen paints around $298 compared to a $3,000 projector. So let's see what we got here. What's our calculated cost for our setup here? Do, 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 do. Here, where is my number going down? Here we go. Let's just say if I were to do just this screen, this screen cost me two bucks to put together. Projector I'm using cost me $75. And the screen paint is costing around $298. So altogether, 
my price tag for my setup would be around $375. That's it. That's all it's going to cost me. Where you have in some demonstrations, you'll see projectors at $3,000, $4,000, $5,000. In order to get that image or achieve that image, you're going to have to spend the money for that projector. Now, that's to say I didn't do, want to do the cardboard setup here. And I want to do a basic 100 inch fixed frame screen, which will cost you roughly about $130. I know I buy tons of fixed frame screens. And this screen is at 130 at around $298 for our product. And your project, I say roughly 100 bucks because you can get an LX400, an, LX, uh, uh, an LX700, an LW, one of those. That's the projector I use to push fish through a window at one of these uh, places that we're doing an installment. So that's about a $100 projector right there. So now your price tag is going to cost you, look how beautiful that image looks. It's going to cost you around $528. you got people that spent $3,000 for a projector, $800 for a projector, $1,000 for a projector, $1,500 for a projector. And they still got a horrible picture. And they can't come anywhere close to producing an image that beautiful. And keep in mind, we've done this test against high-grade certified screens. So this technology can overpower a $5,000 screen with ease. So consider the fact what you're painting on any surface you choose. So as I always said, if you look at those demonstrations and whatever projector you're using in that demonstration, that's what you're going to have to buy in order to get the same quality image. So you won't be saving any money. Yeah, you can read a dark shade of gray. Now, if any screen print out there tells you, oh, we read infinity, no, you do not. We're experts in black technology. I can honestly tell you, you're not reading that at all, period. You're reading a shade of gray. That's what you're reading. The imperial behind us, which is the darkest gunmetal we ever developed, doesn't even read an infinity one. It reads a dark shade of gray. That's what it picks up. So this technology is neither gray, neither white, or neither black. It's kind of a dark pink rose. And it can read a shade of black. Or sorry, shade of gray. And as you can see, you can't see the projector anywhere in front. We don't do that whole close up. We're over here. Let me show how far back we're at. Take this off. That's where my projector is sitting. So we're about 10 feet from the screen. I was going 9 to 10, but we're actually 10 feet from our screen. And of course, in a fully lit environment, as always, with commercial lighting. So what we want is we want a screen that looks beautiful even when the projector's off and even more beautiful when the projector's on. Since this technology is completely borderless, you can put a nice little beautiful frame around it, or right way you want to do it. And you can basically have a screen that's going to match your interior. Next color we're going to add into that, we're going to put in something called, we're going to call it Vintage Chestnut Brown. I got a couple of antique bars that contacted us and they want screens to match the interior. They don't want a black screen in there, they don't want a white screen in there, and they don't want a gray screen in there. They want something to match that interior. So we're going to come up with a nice, beautiful chestnut brown. shows you a movie demonstration you got a chance to watch in the last demonstration movies sports TV shows it's not going to affect the screen's color not going to just give you discoloration of a tint of blue or green or whatever color we change it to not going to happen that's why the white level tests are very important to have done we did those on ultra short though and we did those on long throw 
And the big beefy projectors you see sitting in the corner, not one of them has hit the screen yet. We've been using this 600 by 800, 720p, it's all we need. It's like a giant LED panel. It looks exactly like them. Once we get ready to launch the FLE, which is the technology that absorbs 100,000 lux of light. You know what that, that thing can do to an LED panel? Right, you can absorb sunlight. So with a screen that can absorb 100,000 lux of light, that means it can easily be able to overpower and compete and compete with an LED panel. I'm actually in that form site. I'm studying their technology. Because if we stick that LED panel next to sunlight, it doesn't pick up. That's the other stage we're working on. We're working in multiple stages. So I do want to compete with the LED panel and with that sun technology we have, they absorb sunlight, well we can do it easily. I can't wait. I got some documents coming back from the government. We got a patent. Oh, there's no way in the world on God's green earth. I was going to let that sucker out the door without having patents, paperwork, trademarks, everything locked into it. Oh, we have to. That thing is actually freaking amazing. Matter of fact, the date might get pushed back on when we're going to be able to launch it because of that paperwork. That's why I explain to people, just because we don't show you doesn't mean we don't have it. We just wait for that when court comes up. We'll show you the paperwork. Look at that. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to do the color for my screen. I'm going to do a powder blue and a high yellow. That's what I want for mine. So we got, got blue, green, blue, green, blue, green, purple, and brown. I'm trying to do this week. And then there'll be orange, red. We'll do the week after that. Isn't that gorgeous? On a screen that is called Scorch Rose Pink. So I say you gotta think outside the box. I think people would just like a company don't know what to do. We got so much stuff launching in one hit, they don't know what to hate on first. They don't know what to do, they're just confused. Next week we start working on uh, showing up a little bit of the ad tech technology, a little bit more. I'm gonna have it on advertisement on different sites. And I want to basically show the difference between ad tech and an LED. 
Antec is far cheaper than an LED screen to have that installed in. As a matter of fact, the installments, not even need them by, by professional. You can literally put the screen in yourself. And it's portable. And it's a projection screen on top of that. Can't dedicate things to Christ and get stuff like this. Where is, um, let me see. I'd never really stuck to one lotion until I tried Usern Advanced Repair. After just one week, my skin felt. That tightener level four. Of high quality demo videos for showcasing your business. In today's digital age, businesses need to have a strong online presence to reach their target audience effectively. One of the most effective ways to showcase your business online is through high quality demo videos. Demo videos are a powerful tool that can help you communicate. And she's right on that. It's definitely a way of advertising, but the only problem is that your screen looks like crap, your product looks like crap also. So basically, if you're advertising your product and your screen washes out, you can't use it in a fully lit environment, you're definitely going to have to use it in a commercial environment because, again, you're not going to turn your commercial environment into a movie theater. So if your screen can't function correctly in a commercial environment, then your colors and everything are not going to play right, and that's going to make the product undesirable. Like, you know how, you know how beautiful that those tomatoes look? So we can pull this screen up in a commercial environment. It would function with no problem whatsoever. But if we use a gray or white screen, it couldn't read it, and your colors would wash out completely, which means they would have to alter and change the environment to get the screen to work, and that doesn't work in a lot of places. Products or services and engage your audience. And look, we didn't even expect a projector to do it. Matter of fact, tell you, I was on site. You saw me on site. We convinced the owner to go buy two 720p projectors. No 4K, no 720p. And got fish to push through glass. Anybody else? Would have told her to buy $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 projector. Or oh, you're going to have to have this to need to do so and so and so. And that, yeah, that's crap. we get people try to mimic our work but yet they skip all the tests there's no tests involved whatsoever this is why they have such high failure rates don't test so any color we want so now we're past this point because we already have the technology to develop the colors that we need for what we want the next thing for me on my plate is to watch a sun killer technology or you want to call it take on an LED panel pick up TVs because that's my next level I'm going to we're beyond the projection screen right now I want to go near the LEDs I want the TVs next and can capture the attention of your audience quickly by using creative visuals music and sound effects you can create an immersive experience that keeps your audience engaged. All grand technology, projector mapping applications, all that other cool stuff. Now look at that. Look at the look at the look from here. Projector sitting ten feet from the screen in a fully lit environment. And look at the image that's pulling up, how crisp it is at six hundred by eight hundred res. This is why I tell you that gray and white screen is to cost you more money. A gray screen from this system wouldn't even register on my projector, and you do a white screen. Thousand lumens, that's what we're running. Actually, we're not going to have a thousand lumens by the time we get from A to B, but you know. This can help increase brand awareness and drive traffic to your website. Keep it short and sweet when creating demo videos. For those of you who have the 
Advanced projectors. At least you don't spend five thousand dollars for the screen. And at least the product you're buying from us is tested, and backed, and guaranteed. And if you want, you can ship it back to us. I mean, they can't do that. They can't even give you a batch number. They can't even give you test. And for those of you who have not bought your projector, well. You're not going to be paying thousand dollars for a projector if you're dealing with us at the end of the day. You're not going to spend five hundred dollars for one. Not even three hundred. I've had customers contact me and say, "Hey, look, I want to paint this screen in." And have you bought a projector yet? I haven't bought one yet. And we can go on eBay and we get them a projector for under two hundred dollars. The projector that we use to do the 250-inch monster screen outside is sitting right over there. It's a 720p projector that we use. That's it. $270. So if you have a good screen, you don't really have to spend the money for the projector. Because screen does all the work. These projectors we have here, these old model projectors, they work perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with them. You really don't have to upgrade your projector. It's your screen that's having the problem. Look how beautiful that color is. 2002 projector. Doesn't even have a 69 attached to it. On large screens or monitors, you can capture the attention of attendees and showcase your products or services effectively. See myself right now in one of them shows, and somebody saying, well, We're going to be using AK for what? We need an AK projector, but we don't even need 4K. We don't even need 1080p. Just give me the 720p projector in the corner. That's the oldest one you got. We'll take that one over there. That's us. Yeah, but it doesn't have a contrast. We don't care. That's poor color. We don't care. It doesn't have an HMI port. We don't care. We can get it to run. There's no problem. Fifty lumens, seven twenty p. That's my screen that I use for work. Just got finished cleaning my projector. Had to take it apart and clean out the filters and everything. Yeah, little tiny filters on that thing. Yeah, that's my image. It comes up. That's on our black technology right there. Yep. We have technology for days on anything we want. Oh man, I'm telling you, I'm gonna do myself a caution screen. I'm designing my own stickers. I'm gonna do our own stickers, everything, design this caution screen. I'm gonna do it in orange. And if you ever saw the um what the screen called nuclear burnout, that screen was green. It was a customized color. It's nuclear green. You can only thrive if you're in the right environment. Oh, more than 50 million Americans. Probably show off an 8, 000, 8, 8, 8, a 4K, I an mean, 8K projector, but need it? No, we don't need that thing. It's just this overkill. Each of these creatures plays a critical role in maintaining the balance of our ecosystem. We don't have anything without the, the narration of voice.
That's when we were doing a lot of 720p's. And then you had people saying, well, they don't work on 4K. Yeah, we bought a PX747 projector using the demonstration, showed the difference between 4K and 720p next door technology, showed no difference whatsoever. We also did it at 1080p. We did 1080p versus 720p. We did 1,000 lumens versus 5,000 lumens. 600 by 800, 720p versus a WXGA projector side by side. Yeah, mm -hmm. been there, done that one already. We don't require it. We don't need it. For gray or white screens, you have to have those projectors. You need them because your screens don't work correctly. And still, even though with the projector, you still don't work correctly. Like right now, you couldn't even read that. But we can, at a different color. You talk about resolution, look at this, 600 by 800 res projector. You can literally see the drops on the rows at 10 feet back in a fully lit environment. No change, no discoloration, nothing at all, period. And this is what kills me when I see people with 4K projectors with the camera right on top of the screen to look at their resolution, look how crisp. It's a big deal. You can do that with, we can do that all day long with 600 by 800 with no problem. I sat there and watched that demonstration with that 4K projector. I'm like, I just spent freaking $1,300 for that machine because it's $1,300 for that particular projector. 4K right next to a projector, I paid $150. Do you have any idea what's processing through my head when I was watching that demonstration? I sat there on camera and said, I will never buy another 4K projector ever again. And I never have. Never bought one. Don't need them. You have to have them on your own gray and white screens. The resolution on a gray and white screen is poor. It is so poor, it's not even funny. And guess what pops up on a 600 by 800 at 720p projector on a gray and white screen? Screen door effect pops up. Because you can see it. It's visible. You can see it crystal clear. This technology eats it up. You don't see it. Yeah. It, they're, 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 I've tested that stuff, man. It just doesn't... It, it, you have to have that projector. You have to spend that money. You don't have a choice. So when I get people... When I go into those form sites, too, there is a resolution site, too, for people talking about high-resolution projectors. And I go in there with old fate at 600 by 800 and show them images like this. And they swear, by, they swear, they swear that the projector we're using, we don't tell them we're using yet, is a 4K projector. I'm like, no. Is it 1080p? Like, no. And we show them the model number. Like, you've got to be kidding me. You're, you're crapping me, right? This is not this is not real. And I say, yeah, it is. It's a projector right there. We do a little live stream. We show it to them, and then just blown away by it. Yep. Wait till we show them the colored screen. I'm gonna break someone's brain over there. You're gonna crack. Like, what the frick was that noise? Someone's brain just malfunctioned. Na, 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 na. This is the reason why when we get on ABS forms, they don't want us on there because we alter and change everything on there. So if you got a site talking about strictly how white screens do so and so and so, we conquer that. Gunmetal screens do so and so and so, we conquer that. Black screens don't have the capability to do this, that, and the other. We conquer this. There's no such thing that a screen paint can take on a physical projection screen. Conquer that. Ambient light projection technology. We conquer that. Acoustic technology. Conquer that. Projector mapping applications. We've done so many levels of that, it's not even funny. We conquer that. Yeah. Window advertising. We conquer that also, too. Outside demonstrations also conquer that. And much left. Ultra short throw applications, we also conquer that. You know why? Because the majority of almost ultra short throw demonstrations, I've seen every single one of it either on a silver, a gray, or white screen. And every single one of those projectors did in dark environments, which is not what that projector was designed to do. You can't do them in fully lit environments. So if I want to take out an ultra short throw, I show them the Optima GT55 outside at 140 inches and it shuts everything down. Yeah. Now we got color screens. So that's why they don't want us on the site because we disrupt everything. But the proof is there. It ain't like we're in there talking trash and we can't back it up. We can back it up, it's right there. That's why. Nope, never been a big fan of ABS forms. I just don't like their biased opinions. 
I don't like the fact that they don't basically explore new technology and they're basically just just stuck within their own tradition and own ways at the end of the day. We showed them the FLE technology absorbing sunlight. They got scared. They definitely removed it from their site. No advertising, nothing whatsoever. Terrified. Because now the, I guess, projected gurus who spent years talking about how ambient light projection technology is the top technology. We come in here and do that. Pretty much diminishes their room. Diminishes their chat. Diminishes their knowledge. It means they don't have to start all over again. They don't have to learn about us. And they don't want that. So they won't accept change. But, like I said, how technology works, you roll with it or you get crushed by it. And I'm sitting here having this conversation at 600 by 800 res. Look at that. Look at that chocolate display. Now I want some chocolate. I love the naysayers. I love the people that tell me at the end of the day I can't make a screen a different color. We can't do this. Screens can't be black. Screens can't do this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. We love you guys to death because there's a reason why we definitely do what we do. It's just prove you wrong at the end of the day. Oh, you can't make a screen colored. Why can't you make a screen colored? I literally go to form sites and just ask that question at a random. How come your screen can't be blue, green, red, or other color? Because they start to get to the whole spectrum of colors and color balance and all this that. And you can't read this and won't do that. And you know how to be calibrated. It's impossible. It can't be done. There we go. Right there. Gee whiz, Elise. Got to people. You got to think outside the box. Literally, we're doing that right now. That's why I, was, that's why I know all this stuff. Because I go online and I research tons of stuff. Just out of curiosity of what other people are out there doing something completely different that's way outside the box. Like cardboard furniture, which is freaking fascinating. And some people think it's just one thin layer. No, no, no. That furniture they make is multiple layers of cardboard can press together. It's a machine that can press this together. So this stuff is, it's, it's like a solid form. And I'm watching how they're putting this thing together. And they take that maybe 20 or 30 stacks, compress that together, and then they basically saw it to what shape they want, and then they basically treat it so it doesn't become damaged from water or whatever, and they turn it into wood to make, not wood, but like in a wood-like structure for furniture. And I'm looking at this like, this would be fantastic for a projection screen. I would love to have a cardboard projection screen. So I'm actually talking to one of these companies to be able to structure me a screen made in the same way they use for making furniture because I want a cardboard projection screen. I want something where I can put in areas where I can drop speakers into, you can put little caps or cabinets in the back of it so the sound's not all over the place. Yeah, I'm actually getting cardboard screens made because now we have the formula to basically convert it into this. Well, all our technology does this, but in different colors. You money back. Oh, they just have that lamp in that little corner back there. Calculates everything from optimal television or projector screen size to speaker locations to ceiling layouts. You can also browse our extensive design guides and inspiration gallery. I have been there. Meanwhile, I'm here watching this on this projector. So on the road of basically watching and interested in making things out of furniture, I bumped into a company that makes these compressed, dense sheets of cardboard that can be used for just about anything you want in the structure. And I'm thinking to myself, this would be a fantastic company to work with to make our customized cardboard screens. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't make a difference what the surface is. As long as that coating is attached to it, that's what makes the screen. So we can make our screens out of recycled materials, whatever you want. So you can melt bottles down and convert anything you want. Yeah. That's what I love about it. Excuse me. Anything we want, we can convert it into a high-end screen. You now we can change colors. And 
now my next step is I have to find a projector just like I like this projector. I don't care about the, it doesn't each one, but I need a projector. This does only 4.3. I need a 69. I need a 69. I'm replacing all my projectors with this. There, there's no way to this thing. I mean, it, attach it to a ceiling, whatever. Take it anywhere I want to go. It, it's fantastic. I freaking love it. Which we're doing the venue. We're doing the portable projectors over here on this desk right here. So I'm still waiting for my Dell. I got a Dell coming in at 300 lumens. That's 50 lumens right now. So we could run 300 lumens on the desk with no problem whatsoever. With no problem whatsoever. So that is going to be it. They're going to work on those portables pretty soon. But to see the color screen up, come up, and to see the white levels push, the contrast push, and be in a different color. gonna blow up online it's gonna blow up and out there it's definitely gonna blow up it's definitely gonna blow up any Irish bars we're gonna want to have a green screen and they're set up that's gonna look amazing as a matter of fact I want to do a custom a couple of customized borders too not needed but again it'd be something cool to dress up the screen real nice working on something involving the color technology this is not outdoor but we do have a screen that we are working it's going to be outdoor it's going to be colored because i do want to screen something that someone can have in their garden we have a beautiful garden in their backyard and if you don't i'm just saying it'd be nice to add to that it's something interesting we're working on i can't even tell you exactly how we're going to design it how it's going to be put together but it's going to tell you one thing it's going to be sick as heaven to what Oh, I just figured out what he just said. It wasn't a curse word. Literally, he just he said, I'm not going to say what he said, but it, it sounded exactly like what, he, what I thought he just said. But that's funny. If I make a lighter pink, if I make a lighter pink, I'm pretty much going to have that screen for charity only. So basically, we're just going to donate all proceeds to breast cancer. That's stuff I want to start doing when I get out there and start hitting that main link, that main chain line where we get investors and bring people on board. Then we'll start designing those particular screens for those particular events. So we'll have a screen that'll be like a nice little soft pink, and that'll be fantastic for a breast cancer awareness month. me. Let me see.
Oh, that would have been hilarious if he had caught lag when he did that jump. That would have been kind of funny to watch. fully lit environments. Imagine what it looks like with the lights out. of machines to try to fool our customers into believing that it's all coming from the screen. neon colors because in the gaming community there's all kinds of screens you want to design and those of you who have like outstanding uh, ability to draw anime and all that stuff I can't imagine what your screens are going to look like you imagine design this great big huge cardboard surface with the color surface you want and you can draw your own anime designs around your screen knowing you need like neon lights that's why I said you gotta think outside the box. That's why we did those motorized projection screens that way. We did those designs outside the screens, all kinds of artwork all over them to show that you don't have to have a boring, dinky motorized projection screen to change it to anything you want. I got 
a buddy of mine, he does that kind of stuff. He does this crazy art with um, Street Fighter and all these stuff, these characters and stuff. And he's going to do a couple of screens for us. Project fish right through the screen. In but also too, fast-paced business world, it is essential it can read to color embrace and contrast because it has this technology embedded into it. It is not just a choice. So imagine having a screen that looks like the Starcade portal. We can make the technology rear projection. We can make it colored. We can have produced colors, everything we want, and you can put your projector on the other side and push an image right through it. Imagine a world where. There's nothing we can't do. I'm telling you, the sky's the limit. Anything we want to design, anything we want to build, we have that capability now. That's what we want to do with it next. So my showroom is going to be a little different than the average showroom. We want to show the customer that they're not stuck to fixed frames and motorized projection screens, that you can go way beyond that. It gives you a different way of thinking. You can walk through a Home Depot and imagine you can turn anything in that environment to a projection screen. I think what hurts me the most is when I see powerful machinery just being dumbed down on poor screens. Yeah, that, that, that kind of it bothers me a little bit. It does. The Disney World, the Roncos, the barcode projectors, massive projectors they had back there for the line exhibit. Every last one of the screens was white. I was like, oh, what a waste of freaking power. Gee, with the wheeze. Target had a, um, a makeup uh, section in there. They had a 4K BenQ projector showing off the makeup items on a white screen. Completely washed out. Horrible looking. Unbelievable. Waste of power. In the hospital. And they're getting a, um, a checkup. Sony projector. Sure throw. She literally turned the lights out to show me the projector when he turned it on. I'm like, oh my goodness. Spend stuff. I mean, my, these are hospitals, institutions, stores. They got the money to spend for very high end, expensive machines. Just blame on white screens all day long. And even in courthouses, white screens. Amazing projectors, white screens. Schools, white screens. The thing about the schools, too, on top of that, if you live next to a school and they need to upgrade their projectors, guess where it's coming out of? It's going to come out of your pocket. You're going to pay for that. They're going to keep upgrading their projectors to try to get better images to produce in their classrooms. And every time they go out and they get rid of all these projectors, which we pick up, by the way, because I have a friend of mine who works in the school district, we get those projectors for pretty much nothing because to them, they're trash, but to have them, us... We can make them look like this on our technology. So if we got a contract with the school district and we coat that technology in there, they won't be buying a projector for a very long time. And that means at the end of the day, this is money that's not coming out of your pocket because you're going to have to pay that tax bill for it. Yeah, all those old projectors, man, yeah. We, I am out of buddy of mine was actually bringing truckloads of those, those um projector like what do they do with them he said they scrap them they destroy them some of them they sell off sometimes some of the teachers may take a few of them some go to auction and the rest of them get destroyed 
So we get a pallet, two or three pallets of those projectors in, bundle it in with this screen paint because we know what we can do with it and we'll make money. We can flip them and make money off of them. Projector cost me nothing. That's why we had a few people who wanted contracts with us because they can go to those auctions, get those projectors, and sell bundles using our technology. Because we can take that old looking projector and convert it into this. white screen you get one of them real cheap five you can do a fixed frame instead a hundred hundred thirty bucks you'll pay for one at 100 inches converted with this technology that screen just jumped to three thousand dollars because that screen can take out a certified especially that black technology we got over there Anything you coat that stuff on there, it's guaranteed to pull an infinity contrast that would generate in full unit environments. It's designed to do what it's designed to do. So your screen then jumped from $130 that you paid for now to a $3,000, $4,000, even $5,000 screen because we can take out a certified with no problem. That's a huge, massive amount of money to make in such a short amount of time. And then if you're able to get these projectors with the school district, city hall, all these people throw these projectors away and they upgrade all their new stuff, new projectors, you're able to get on the ground floor, find somebody on the inside that can get you these machines. You're pretty much getting these machines for free. So now you can take that old 720p projector, stick it on that white projector screen, convert it with that technology and get an image like this. And sell that package for a couple thousand dollars. You made a 90% profit back to yourself. Probably more than that. That's why people do business with us. They make a lot of money. Or if you got a gray or white screen, well, gray screen, period, and you upgraded that, well, bottom line is you're still going to spend the money for the expensive projector. You're still going to be stuck in a dark environment. You can't read 100% contrast level. If you're talking compared to this technology we have over here, if you're doing that, you, can't, you can register your white levels, but you can't read color, and you can't knock out any of the certified screens whatsoever, which means, again, most people who have deep pockets, or some of you have deep pockets that can afford the high-grade certified screens wouldn't touch you with a 10-foot pole. So, no, you can't use it. You can't use gray screens in commercial environments. They don't work in schools. They don't work in hotels. They don't work in What's hospitals. This is Mike. They don't work in class. They don't work in anywhere at all, period. They won't read. They don't read none. none all the high-powered machines we have in here, they don't read at all, period. At all, period. So what will we use them for? Nothing. I wanted to make this video. To and for some people to sit there and say, well, that's not true. Look, my desk here I have here, it's all made out of cardboard. It's coated in this technology. Actually, this part right here, we're actually, I'm upgrading the desk. So all this is coated in our, going to be coated in our technology. So if I'm in my office and I'm working, I have to be able to be in a fully lit environment. I can't be in a dark environment. If I'm in a dark environment, how am I going to read paperwork and documents? So if I turn the lights on, the gray screen is going to wash out automatically. So how would that help me? If I'm putting a planetarium dome ceiling and I need for me to produce a 100% contrast level, how would that even work? Let's entertain you for a minute. Ugh. Let's see. Where is it, by the way? I think it's in the stack. There you go. Organize. I'm glad I organize everything. Man, uh, organizing stuff, that would be all over the place. So, let's show you. All right? It's a gray surface right here. Perfectly fine, right here. I'm put this right here. All right. Desire, AK, nature. 
getting that from YouTube. See that funny tint going off? That's a gray screen. That off color? Yeah, that's what, that's what they do. They don't register correctly. They can't read contrast. Not even against a color screen. Our color screens can read contrast over a gray screen. There we go. Now I'll show you. Because when you go into this form site with the gray screens in there, the first thing it goes, no, there's no way to go. Your color screen can take up. My yeah, it can. See? Can't read contrast for Jack. You can't even read contrast next to a color screen. You can't read. So that shows you that the technology we have here can read a shade of dark gray, which is used for black on screens that don't read infinity, better than a screen that's gray. Makes the gray screen look off, doesn't it? Yeah. I know my stuff. I do my test. Watch this. White screen saver. Getting that from YouTube. And also, too, our technology pulls a tremendously high white level that turns a gray screen dirty. So that scorch rose that we had, that rose pink, that was color that color technology was developing can basically overpower a gray screen. It produces a better contrast in the gray screen, even though it's a different color, and it also produces a better white level. Mm. 4K snow screen saver. Getting that from YouTube. I can back it up because that right there is black and white paint and black and white paint doesn't really do anything it did at one point it did have a purpose but now the way technology is evolving and everything it just doesn't have serve a purpose anymore so consider the fact that our technology has something called a heightener a level four heightener which allows the screen to be able to read and accept white light same technology we use on black screens and this is the reason why the color technology is far more advanced than a gray screen due to the fact that it can read its white levels better than a gray screen and pull up its contrast level even though the screen is not even the category of a traditional screen. Blue screen. Getting that from YouTube. Green screen. Getting that from YouTube. Your colors can pick up a little better, but you can't read white and you can't read contrast. Red screen. Getting that from YouTube. See, your colors go off a little bit from time to time, so you can pick up some colors, but not every color. And keep in mind, each one of our colors changes, and as the color changes for the technology, it actually has an enhancement that basically converts differently to the color of the screen, which means some screens may pick up better contrast, and some may pick up higher white levels. What are all going to pick up higher white levels? I got that enhanced technology in it. Four K white screen saver. Getting that from YouTube. So if the advantage point of the gray screen is their white levels, then you fail because again, you can't read the white levels next to this technology at all, which is not even white. And that's why I was trying to explain that. That's why I said that the purpose of testing this against a gray screen is absolutely pointless because it doesn't register in our screen in any way whatsoever. I'm not just saying that to be mean. I'm actually telling you that's the reason why it won't register. I've done the test, that's why I know. I want to get back to our colors here. I like this screen. 
Start your Forex trading journey with up to $10,000 in cash bonuses when you open, fund, and trade Forex with IG. I have to do the test. That's how we knew. All right, that's it for me. I was going to try to upload a short, but for some reason the short on YouTube is acting funny. So it's not working correctly. So I'll just wait until they get it fixed. Because we've got some shorts we want to show off. i got to upload more pictures over to uh, Facebook to show off more of the technology. And that's it. So let me go over here. Let's go back. And shut down my unit. Showing our beautiful screen. Oh, I deleted the other video. Uh, it's about the last, um, uh, what's it called? The last, um, uh, we're not doing any more, any more updates on their website anymore. I'm doing it offline. Or I'm going to have to pay somebody else to do it. Because, again, I don't have the time to do it. I really honestly don't. Um, but I deleted it because I just don't want to talk about anything at all. I'm just tired of, I don't want to talk about building or designing. Some stuff we'll talk about on here. But I don't want to make it the main focus. I really just don't. So it's. The, the video for me is, is is useless for me. I just want to come on here, show demonstrations of what we're working on, build a few little things here and there, and that's it. Keep it short and sweet. I'm trying to keep it under an hour. So anything else, the uh, filtration systems and all that stuff, if I decide to make another YouTube channel involving basically how to, I don't know, uh, well, improve your home life or whatever by using basically natural resources and that stuff then I'll do it for that dedicated for that but I don't want stuff getting mixed up Saturday. I don't know why. It's weird. Faithful. We're back. We got a rainy day here in Allentown. So I'm going to head home. To get all this set up in here and do these demonstrations and get them finished. That's one of the things I should have did when I had when I was renting the other house up in Haven Town. I should have had two places to work at, and that's what I liked about when I had the um, when I had the uh, apartment, being able to leave from there and just go to the other place but if i had found the other place first before the apartment i'd have never showed you the apartment at all period but having two places to go back and forth to is fantastic because again it keeps the creepies off our back and that's one of the what's in when i was talking to the officer he was saying well base mistake you're making here man is just showing people where you live at and that's a bad idea because you're going to have those weirdos pop up and they're going to and they're just going to do stuff like that so you have to expect that's going to come with the territory when you're online. So I got out of here, um, prayed about it, 
and Lord bless us to get a nice little spot, a little nice little house, not too far away. I can commute back and forth, and that's why I don't tell anybody where I live at because of the experience I went through with this uh, fellow who is probably still stalking me. Um, it's been basically doxing her addresses and my family's address and stuff like that. So, uh, guy's a complete creep, freaking weirdo at the end of the day. Can't wait to get him in court. Can't wait to sue him. We're definitely suing him. Uh, in the month of April, he's being sued for April, May, and June. There's several lawsuits coming up against this individual. But, yeah, uh, he, he's creepy as I don't know what. I would not trust this guy with a credit card, debit card, my information like that. And I had a few companies that did went through his website, and they were like, wow, his site is pretty much, it's psychotic in there. It's psychotic. The website, the YouTube channel, just taking the pictures of me and all that stuff, and weird stuff. I mean, weird, weird stuff. So... You know, people stay away from him because, again, I mean, I'm not making stuff up. It is. You go to his site, you go to his YouTube channel, he's just constantly obsessed with me and my business. So, yeah, that's the reason why I, I moved and got this other place. We got this nice little cozy place. We got blessed. We got a, a good rent, good landlord. And realized this guy was contacting our landlords. When I was with my ex, he was contacting our landlords any place we moved to. And he was trying to get us removed out of our places. And he was obsessed. So, yeah, that's weird. When you start reaching over into those boundaries, especially in home theater, where you're going way outside of YouTube and you're trying to track down people's whereabouts, it's, you reach that creepy zone. It's gotten weird. So, yeah, um, he's also being sued for stalking. So, yeah, we have stuff where we're showing in court about him, you know, sending us emails. He knows where we're at and stuff like that. So he's being sued for a few, few lawsuits are being popped up on him. But, you know... That's the reason why I don't tell anybody where I'm at and where I'm moving to. The new place I'm going to be getting when I leave at the end of the year, I'm looking at getting this uh, land. I'm not going to be doing any video demonstrations, nothing out there. Keep all that separate. So that way we don't have to deal with these uh, creepy, weird individuals who, again, have, they need to find God. They got problems. You know, you notice that I don't post any of their paints and stuff they're making to my site to act like I'm making their products why would I make something that's not tested and doesn't even work correctly on camera but they're constantly taking my images and items that I make and saying hey we got this and we got that and we know how to make, we don't yeah that tells you at the end of the day how badly they want to be us but you know right and it just puts you out there on that level but yeah that's the reason why I mean this guy was sending me mess I showed you tons of text messages of the guy basically just contacting me Asked me all kinds of weird questions, but um, one of the ones he was trying to ask, trying to figure out where the new place was at. Oh, where's it at? Oh, where, where, are you, where are you living at now? Creepy, creepy stuff. Just creepy. Yeah. He's a creepy guy. But he's going to have his day pretty soon in court. He'll have his day in the lawsuit. We're supposed to be suing him for multiple, he's being sued for multiple things, so... You know, whether he shows up or not really doesn't make a difference. But I'm so happy with this. Oh, yeah, we did a um, improvement on the desk. So, yeah. So, what I did was I basically put these panels down here. Because the screens do give off a little bit of a dip. Especially if you're using it for a table. Because, again, it was made for a screen, not for a table. And so, this actually strengthened the table. I'm going to be gluing all this down. And then we're going to coat all this in with our black technology and i'm going to run some chasers in between the lines so it looks pretty cool so look, the entire desk is actually moving so yeah working on a few things that are going to be new projects and stuff like that so i cannot wait to finish my setup yeah creepy 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 you can contact the people i was doing business with literally contact the people i was doing business with to try to get them to keep on working with us. Let me explain something to the to the, the creepo real quick. First things first, how real contracts work. So you can understand this. They buy from you. That's what they do. Nobody in their right mind will ever sign a contract with you without testing the merchandise first. If they come and they buy from us. If they like the product, then what they'll do is they'll basically contact us for a contract. And once the back and forth negotiation on the draft goes back and forth and both parties can come to a, a conclusion, a decision of what they want to do, then you get a contract, you sign, you get it notarized, and you're set in stone and you're good to go for how many years it's set up. 
So even if you do contact these institutions, places I'm working with, and you make statements to them by saying that I'm a scam artist and I'm this, that, and the other, and to make me look bad, uh, keep in mind that um, they, they've already done business with me. And they look at you as a jealous stalker. So since I have a private investigator in my back pocket, if one of those letters do happen to pop up, he's going to track down exactly where it came from, and we're going to find out. So you know. I'm just giving you a fair warning. My buddy will find you. So if you do send one of those over and you decide you want to contact one of these companies and carry on act up, we will know exactly where it came from and who it came from and where you live at. And we will make sure that the company you contact has all your information, including us, the lawyers and the police. And I'll see you in court. If you don't show up, then you have a problem. Good morning. Oh yeah! The loaf of bread! Yeah! You always want to be on camera, but you don't want to be on camera. Like, I don't want to be on camera. Rawr. Okay. All right, we're done right there, people. Oh, look at him doing a little scratchies. A little scratchy. Are you scratching with the scratchies? A little scratchies. You can scratch. I don't care about that. I don't need it anymore. All right, people. I got to go. I got much work to do. Um, I got updating to do, and then after that, uh, I'm going to be hiring somebody else to do my updating for my website, um, including the FLVT company. Someone's building that for us, so we're not going to build that site, which I'm glad because I really don't feel like building it. Someone else is going to do it, and I'm thinking I'm probably going to go with uh, building it from scratch. And I got a couple of friends that are really high tech programmers. I'm going to have one of them build the site, and then we can add in some, maybe some, um, I don't know, what do I want to add to it? Oh, I do want an interactive world. I definitely want that so I can interact with the mouse. So that's pretty cool. So I definitely want that. So I'm going to think of some pretty cool ideas. All right, got to go. Thank you all. And of course, it wasn't for our Lord and Savior. Oh, so we give all thanks to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because without him, this wouldn't exist. Got to go. Thank you all. And God bless. Oh, creepy.